It's not easy for us busy geotechnical engineers to keep up with industry trends while keeping up with our engineering work. Therefore, it's our goal at the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast to help you do just that. We strive to keep our listeners informed on important industry topics and also to educate you on interesting technical topics and trends in the geotechnical world. In this episode of the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast, I'll be talking with Andres F. Peralta, MSCE, MBA, PE. He's a product manager at Tensar International Corporation, and we're going to be talking about his newly enhanced free web-based software called Tensar Plus. This software allows engineers, contractors, and owners to design engineered solutions for a variety of applications. I'm your host, Jared Green, and I'm excited to be bringing you yet another episode of the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast. Before we go on here, I'd like to recognize our sponsor for this episode, Tensar International. Here's a message from Tensar about their award-winning software, Tensar Plus, which is available to you at no cost. Check out Tensar Plus, the award-winning design software for construction professionals to design with geosynthetics and calculate their value on projects. Tensar Plus is simple to use with a powerful engineering system at its core. It leverages our decades of research and experience with soils all over the world, so you can count on your solutions working the first time, even in the most difficult conditions. Whether you're designing a crane pad or need to build a temporary road over muck, the cost, time, and carbon savings can be calculated, making comparison with alternatives simple. Specs, reports, and product data can be generated for your design, and Training resources, research, and our third-party expert reviews are all provided conveniently in the software if needed. Usable both online and offline, the app is available in browser and on all major mobile platforms. Whatever you're working on, Tensar Plus is your toolbox for success. Welcome to the show, Andres. How are you, man? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. How, uh, what about you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I was really looking forward to our conversation. So I'm glad that you Likewise. carved out some time to be here with us. It's going to be really good. Mm, really thank good. you for the invite. <laughs> All right. Well, can you tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself, a little bit more about the company you work for? What do they do? What do you do? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm a civil slash geotechnical engineer uh, with over eight years of experience um, designing, developing, and commercializing uh, uh, products and tools for the uh, geosynthetic industry. Um, I work for Tensor International Corporation, uh, which is a um, the, the leading geogrid manufacturer company in the world. And we actually um, uh, invented geogrids, um, you know, uh, around uh, the '70s. So it's, it's been a while. <laughs> um, I work with Tensor since um, uh, since I was in college. So uh, been with them uh, for a minute now. <laughs> Um, um, with our GeoGrids, you know, we provide engineer solutions, uh, which are aimed to helping engineers, uh, contractors, and owners, um, you know, achieve uh, more cost-effective and reliable solutions uh, for, you know, paved and unpaved roadways, um, uh, soil stabilization, earth reinforcement, and any other, uh, you know, site development challenges that they might encounter. Um, you know, one important aspect is that um, our solutions are backed by you know, extensive research and, and significant field experience, uh, which means that uh, when you take our designs or, or our solutions and you put them in, in the field, you know that uh, they're going to perform and, and they're going to be reliable. Um, one interesting fact about Tensor is that uh, you know, so far we have st- installed more than a billion square yards of uh, geogrid around the world, which is, you know, a lot of product. And that makes me really proud of, 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 you know, the company that I work for. And I guess the other aspect that makes me really proud about Tensor is that um, Tensor strives to be the most innovative company in our industry. And we're always developing new products and new tools um, that are useful for the engineering community. So, for example, right now, we just uh, developed and launched uh, our latest uh, GeoGrid. Uh, it's called Interax, and you know it has a, a newer structure, more efficient structure, and it has some um, you know material science uh, nuances included in the product. So that's pretty cool. And then the other, um, uh, I guess, tool that we have recently um, taken to the uh, to the market or to the engineering community is, is Tensor Plus, which is a um, you know designed um, tool that anybody can can use over the internet and. 
um, they can see how uh, GeoGrid can benefit um, their designs. Oh, cool, cool. That, that Tensar Plus, you know, what is it and how is it developed? Like what, what, um, what does it solve? Sure. <laughs> yeah, so, so again, Tensor Plus is, you know, um, design software. It's a uh, web-based design software, meaning that you can just go online and, and use it. And um, it can be used to design different types uh, of structures. And when I uh, say structures, I mean uh, paved and unpaved roadways, um, um, working platforms for, you know, maybe a construction site and a scar protection systems. Um, Tensor Plus con contains all the uh, full-scale uh, trafficking testing that we have done um, until now, right? So uh, the nice thing is that you can just go online, sign up for the software, and, and go in and start using that uh, data to, um, you know, design alternatives to, for example, um, uh, you know, a pavement, right? So, so you go into the software, you, you see all the input parameters uh, for you know, payment design, you just put them in. And then on the, you know, the screen, you can see the regular uh, section that you see the layers and, and the thicknesses, but then right next to it, you have a, an alternative uh, section uh, that has the geogrid in it. And the nice thing about it is that um, you can realize the benefits of using uh, geogrid right away. So you see your regular design section, and then you see the optimized section with geogrid, and then you can see how much material you, you can save. Um, and then you can also see, you know, how much life you can get out of the, of the pavement right away. So, so that, that's pretty cool. Um, we're constantly improving uh, the, the software, right? So we are uh, working on um, um, putting into the platform uh, modules to design uh, the ballast and so ballast of uh, railroads. Uh, also, um, another module to um, design foundation systems using uh, geogrids. Uh, and last but not least, something that's pretty dear to my heart is um, um, designing mechanically stabilized earth walls and, and reinforced um, slopes. Excellent, excellent. And how does this software benefit? Uh, it sounds like you, you have a lot of product that's you know installed around the world. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the performance of the material that's in the ground now, how is that being incorporated into design and use in Tensar Plus now? Definitely. So uh, basically, we, we quantify um, the, the, the performance of the, of the grid in the, in the field, right? And we can take that uh, performance as an input parameter into the design. So when you, um, you know, design a, a pavement, uh, what you're getting in the, in the design is, is what's going to happen in the field, because we really understand what um, it's happening uh, uh, you know, in, in the ground. We, we take all our products, we put them in the ground and we test them so we know how they work. So, and that's what provides that kind of like, um, it provides a reliable design to, to whoever is, is designing with, with our products. Okay, excellent. And when you think about Tensar Plus, I mean, what, what's different or how does it compare to, to other types of civil engineering design software that's uh, available right now? Sure. So there are two uh, main um, aspects about um, TensorFlow being different, right? Um, the first one is that, um, um, well, we, we made sure that when when we went out there and uh, kind of like developed the software, uh, we took into account the the our, the customer feedback, right? We wanted to make something that was very um, intuitive and, and easy to use, uh, so people could could use it easily and, and, and you know bring value to them, right? So. Um, you know, even though this software is really intuitive and easy to use, uh, we uh, wanted to make it very powerful and, and robust, right? So um, one thing that, that we realize is that um, sometimes people uh, assume that because a, a, a software is pretty complex to use and the parameters are really hard to obtain, well, the, the output must be, must be good, right? Must be uh, something that they can use in, in their design. And, and then at the same time, if a software um, it's you know pretty easy to use and the design parameters are not that difficult to obtain, well, maybe people question the um, the outputs, right? So in this case, uh, you know, Tensor Plus, um, you know, it challenges that idea because it it has um, you know um, a bunch of um, intricacies, right? For, for example, Tensor Plus relies on uh, complex numerical methods. Uh, to describe the composite uh, behavior between uh, geogrid and, and soil particles, right? And, and, and it's not only that uh, numerical uh, method, but we also we, we have um, tested and validated uh, the, that numerical method. So uh, meaning that all, all this, you know, 
things are in tensor plus when you go in and you perform a design you know that you're getting something um, that is robust and, and, and powerful so so that's kind of like the first part of like why the software is different mm -hmm. and then the second part which i think it's it's pretty cool for the industry is that um tensor plus is not only a design tool but it's also an educational platform so uh if you go to uh tensor plus um uh, you can look around and then you can see that there are parts where uh, you have modules to learn about uh, GeoGrid and how to design with GeoGrid, right? So we provide on-demand uh, training and tutorials uh, that anybody can use, right? And so once you go through those tutorials, uh, then you can use the software to kind of like design and, and get familiar with it and, and, and then, you know, become proficient and include uh, GeoGrid design in, in your toolbox, basically. Right. And, you know, another aspect that is pretty nice about uh, TensorFlow being a, a um, educational platform is that uh, once you complete that um, training, uh, you can get professional development uh, our credits, uh, which I think we, we all uh, need to, you know, keep up our um, uh, PE licenses uh, on check. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, what kind of feedback or response are you seeing from engineers that are using the software like what are people saying about it yeah so well so far the uh the feedback has been uh, really nice um um really positive um we for example uh we host uh design workshops uh, across the, the country uh where we you know sit down in a room with 20 to 30 um engineers civil engineers and, and we kind of go through how uh we or how they can design with with our geo grids right and, and one um I guess part of that um, eight hour uh, workshop is that um, we show them how to use um, TensorFlow or you know, how, how they can input stuff there and, and see how uh, their solution changes and whatnot. And, and you know, that, that's just one, one part of the whole workshop. But then at the end, we ask for feedback, right? And, and one of the uh, common denominators uh, across all these workshops is that they really like the software and they really like to see uh, how the you know the the, the design changes and, and how much value a geogrid can bring uh, to the design in real time, right? Because you can be working on the platform, you can be inputting your stuff, and then you see how your your section is changing and, and how much um, life you're getting out of it and how uh, less material you need. So so that's one one good aspect about it. I guess um, the 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 not so good aspect is that um, we. We get a lot of requests from customers to include uh, either more features or develop uh, newer modules. And, you know, it gets to the point where there is not enough time to, to keep up, uh, you know, with the, uh, the development of, of all this. Um, so uh, we have a pretty uh, long uh, backlog list, but, uh, you know, we're going to get to it at some point and, and you know, whatever it takes, uh, we're going to do whatever it takes. Uh, so the tool is as valuable as possible uh, to our customers and, and to the engineering community in general. Yeah, that's great. Well, it's a good problem or a good challenge to have that people are saying, I want you to add this, I want you to add that. Definitely. <laughs> no, and, and look, we're, we're, uh, we'll take any feedback, right? So yeah. as long as uh, it helps us uh, make this a uh, uh, more useful tool, uh, for sure, we'll take it. Excellent. Are you able to give us a, a kind of a glimpse into the future of Tensar Plus? You know, how could it be? You know, more of a benefit to engineers and engineering firms. What, what's what's on the horizon? Definitely. So, well, one thing that I um, that I think it's, it's key for for Tensor Plus in the future is that it becomes kind of like um, that um, hub for um, um, learning, right? For the engineering community, uh, we want to make sure that people uh, or the Tensor Plus becomes that. Uh, space uh, in the cloud where people can just go and and learn how to design the geogrids and, and, and you know learn about all the um, uh, positive benefits that geogrid can bring uh, to uh, their designs. Right, uh, we want to be able to uh, you know be that uh, the the partner that can show them uh, you know how much value uh, geogrid brings to the table and and help them uh, make. Uh, uh, better informed decisions about their designs, right? Um, so we also see Tensor Plus as being a, a, be a vehicle for, for innovation, right? Uh, in, in the uh, design of uh, uh, solutions with, with uh, geosynthetics and, and, and to move kind of like the, the industry forward, right? So um, and when I say this, I mean that Tensor Plus can become that platform where we can include newer design methods, right? So for example, right now we're, um, we, we constantly work on 
characterizing the um, behavior between our products and, 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 and soil particles, right? Our, our solutions are kind of like a composite system that is really tough to um, understand by just going to a lab and, uh, and, and testing something, testing the material properties of a product, right? So uh, we are constantly trying to understand that uh, uh, behavior or better understand that behavior. So um, right now we're uh, working on, on uh, um, you know, innovative uh, methods, like newer methods that, that use that um, better understanding of that composite behavior. So TensorFlow will be the, the vehicle where we can include these new methods and, and, and approaches and then take them to the industry and let them use it and, and reap the benefits. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, we're getting ready to take a break, but before we do, what would you say is your final piece of advice you'd like to give some of the younger listeners uh, that might have a little bit of uncertainty in their careers? Sure. Um, so one thing that has um, helped me a lot in, in my career is um, in terms of uncertainty and kind of like um, get feedback from, from other professionals in our industries is network, right? So I think networking is it's key. Um, one way of, uh, of networking is, you know, to actively participate in, in professional organizations like uh, the ASE or the GEO Institute and, and, you know, just go out there and, and make connections and not only just, um, you know, uh, passively participate. I think that it's very important to become an active member, you know, be part of the board, um, volunteer, uh, help out. I think that that helps you create, um, you know, strong connections. Uh, that later on can either be uh, mentors or can be people who can help you find a new job if that's, if that's what you're looking for, right? So I guess to tie in with that is like nourish those, those relationships as well, right? Uh, as soon as you make them connect on LinkedIn, uh, ask them out for a coffee or something and, and, and just keep, keep that connection going. I think that that helps a lot with, with uncertainty for sure. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for that. Networking is so key, so key. And especially in the times where we're living now, where, you know, we're, we're you know, some people are hybrid, some people are fully remote, some people are in the field. Exactly. So uh, networking is super, super critical. So thank you mm -hmm. so much for that. So we're going to come back in just a minute and close this one out with Andres in our career factor safety in segment. Stick around. This video is also brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE and PE exams the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE and PE exam prep. All right, welcome back. It's time for our career factor safety end segment. In geotechnical engineering, just like many disciplines of engineering, it's important to incorporate a factor safety into our design. But what about incorporating a factor safety into our career? Today, of course, we're speaking with Andres Peralta, MSCE, MBA, PE. He's a product manager at Tensara International Corporation. Andres, you've already had a very successful career. And when you look back at your career, what's one thing you could say you implemented in your career to give yourself a factor of safety in your career? Oh, definitely. So I think um, one thing that was really important was to never stop learning uh, and never stop growing as a profession, right? Um, so how, how can we uh, tie this into a factor of safety? Well, um, you know, factor of safety, I guess, definition could be capacity over demand, right? So, um, you know, as you continue to increase or to um, grow in your professional career, uh, the uh, demand on the job is going to increase, right? It could be either your boss, uh, your team, your peers, uh, everybody's going to ask a little bit more out of you, right? So, uh, if you want to um, be able to continue to maintain a competent factor of safety, uh, your capacity has to increase, right? So it could be in terms of like capacity to deliver on the job, or it could be technical, it could be managerial, it could be interpersonal. So um, the the key here is uh, keep working on, on 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 your capacity, right? Keep keep growing, uh, keep learning, and, and never stop. Because once you stop, it's really really tough to to get back uh, into it and 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 you know continue to learn. So 
yeah, that's that's the advice. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Never stop learning. That that sounds good. That sounds good. Well, Andres, thank you for coming on and thank you for sharing all the great insights that you shared some great information and advice I know is going to be helpful for our listeners. Now, if somebody is listening in and they're like, man, how can I reach out to them? What's the best way for people to find you? Do you have an email you want to share, your social media? How can they find you? Sure. So my, uh, well, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, just type Andres F. Peralta. Yeah, I'll, I'll show up. So be happy to connect. And then, if, you know, if you want to shoot me an email, uh, my email address is a, a uh, Peralta at tensorcorp.com. I'll be happy to, to connect. Excellent. We'll make sure we get that in the show notes. Thank you so much for coming on. This is great. Thank you so much for the invitation. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. We would love to hear your feedback, comments, and or questions. Please feel free to go to geotechnicalengineeringpodcast.com where you'll find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, that being episode 52, as well as links to NATO resources, websites, or books mentioned during this episode. Until next time, we wish you the very best in all your geotechnical engineer endeavors. Peace.